The XEX-01 Gundam Calibarn is a prototype space mobile suit developed by the Vanadis Institute that aimed to put mobile suit performance above all else, disregarding pilot safety by not having any filters to reduce feedback from the gun format datastorm in order to seek the utmost limits of Gundam capabilities. Let's take a closer look at this magnificent model kit rendition of the famous White Monster in this review of the high-grade Gundam Calibarn from Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury. The Calibarn has got to be one of the best Gundam designs I've ever come across. Its appearance is the definition of beauty in simplicity. The all-white color scheme works really well with its awesome proportions, leaning towards a more masculine look at its upper body but with a form that still retains the elegance that has been carried over from the likes of the Gundam Ariel. I love the way they've designed the legs of this Gundam with the upper legs having all that volume while tapering down as we approach the feet. It just adds to the overall sleekness of the design. Highlights of yellow make up the thruster parts and vents at the head, shoulders, backpack, and legs while the middle of the torso the feet and the trademark Gundam chin is molded in red that completes the job of breaking up the predominantly white color scheme. A good amount of panel lining and painting up some small details, mostly at the backpack, will complete the look of the Kylobarn and make it more accurate to the line art and the anime. And like all of the other Witch from Mercury kits that feature a shell unit, you have the option of building them with the shell units active or inactive. What can I say, you all have to forgive me if I have nothing but praise for this kit design-wise. I love all aspects of its design from the proportions to the color scheme and its overall aesthetic. As for the kit itself, it does have some noticeable seam lines at the back of the head, the backpack and in its signature weapon, as well as some mold lines across some parts but all of it can be easily fixed with some effort. The pearlescent glow of the central shell unit looks magnificent as it catches the light and the ones that are made up of stickers on the legs and the rest of the body also doesn't disappoint as they give a decent presentation of detail under those smoke clear parts. The V-fin is in this RGB theme color and adds to the uniqueness of the look. For the articulation, the head can move up that far and look down this much. The head is on a ball joint connection and can look sideways and turn a full 360 degrees with no problem. The neck part is attached to the body via a ball joint so there's two points of articulation allowing for a wide range of movement for the head. The arm and shoulder can move forwards and back and is on a ball joint which is connected to this white armor part that allows for some extra mobility. You can move the shoulder armor out of the way by moving it up, however, be careful as overdoing it might make it easier to pop off. The arm itself has an impressive range of movement as you are able to raise up the arm this much. Having to pull off this impressive articulation allows you to do some very dynamic poses with the kit. You are able to rotate the upper arm a full 360 degrees as well as the entire thing without anything really getting in the way. There's only a single bend at the arm which I was a bit surprised for a modern high grade to have. Usually they are double jointed, and the wrist is on the usual ball joint connection. Speaking of the wrists, for those of you who have noticed that I used some expressive open hands as well as closed fists for this review, these are actually third-party 3D printed extra manipulators for the HG Aerial. We've got a full rotation at the torso and the middle torso is on a ball joint, enabling the Calibarn to perform a nice ab crunch to the front and some decent side-to-side -side movement as well. These tiny side skirts can move up and down the articulation for the legs are excellent and the kit can pull off a full split. Sideways movement of the legs are incredible. The legs can go forward this much while movement to the back is hampered by the stationary back skirting armor. 
But while you aren't able to move the whole back skirt itself, it does have a gimmick in which these two parts can expand. This feature is useful for when the Calibarn is on its bit on form, because the rear back skirt armor actually holds three bit staves, which we'll get to see in a moment. The front skirts are movable and they are connected together, I just cut them so I can move them independently. The legs are double jointed and the kit is able to make this nice bend. This exposes some of that inner frame and again, going back to the design, I really love how mechanical and sleek this is. This ankle armor is on a ball joint and the feet also rests on ball joints and can move up and down and are separate from the heels. The whole feet are on a hinge joint that allows for forward and backwards movement only, with the feet and the heel being responsible for the sideways movement. The back of the feet hides an interesting feature as these frame parts are able to drop down and together when pointing the toe downwards, the Calibarn is said to be in its high maneuverability mode. A form in which the unit's leg expand outwards complete with features specialized for posture control during space movement. For the backpack articulation, these two thruster ports are connected by a ball joint and can move up and down with a fairly good range and can flare out as well as contract together. The lower armor section can move ever so slightly and this is for when attaching the bit staves. The beam sabers are also stored at the backpack, however, they have no articulation. The HG Gundam Calibarn's articulation is definitely one of its strong points. With a wide range of movement across the major joints, you will have no problems pulling off dynamic poses with this kit. While some of the more seemingly limiting areas such as the single bend at the arm and the limited backward movement of the legs may seem like a cause for concern, these are very minor factors that don't spoil the fun of the posing this kit at all. The kit more than makes up for those minor inconveniences with excellent and sturdy joints that don't feel fragile and holds the kit up very well during poses. Nothing is ever drooping and everything feels stable. As with most of the kits from the Witch from Mercury line, this latest and best entry yet delivers a ton of playability and fun factor that surely won't disappoint. There are two extra clear parts that you may use whenever you choose to build the Calibarn with the shell units in its inactive mode. For its loadout of weapons, the kit comes with two clear blue effect parts for its pair of beam sabers. You can detach the hilts from the backpack and plug the beam effect parts like any other standard beam saber. These are the Calibarn's only close range weapons and I like that they come in this nice shade of blue compared to the usual pink colored effect part. This is the kit's sticker sheet. Now while it may appear that this kit is sticker heavy, most of the largest stickers are used with the Gundam's shell unit, which you then cover up with those clear parts. There are only a couple of white color correcting stickers for the bit staves and one for the rod rifle. We also get a simple clear base for this kit. On to the Gundam Calibarn's main weapon, the variable rod rifle. A long rifle with a propulsion unit on its rear end made up of four quadra thrusters, this is one of the Calibarn's iconic features. The rifle is connected to an articulated arm that connects the, to the backpack for support. We have two handles, one on the side and the main one at the top of the rifle. They are both movable and are able to bend to their respective stored positions. The quadra thrusters are capable of spreading apart, as each one is connected to a hinge joint that spreads out on two connection points. The unique look of this weapon is what adds to the wow factor of this already amazing kit, and the details on the quadra thrusters are beautifully recreated with the use of these green foil stickers. You're able to extend the stock of the rifle along with the thrusters for that extra length, and with the quadra thrusters spread out, the variable rod rifle will resemble a sort of witch's broomstick, hitting home that theme of so-called witches piloting powerful machines known as Gundams. 
This tiny ball joint at the bottom of the right side of the backpack is where the rod rifle will connect and the connection is sturdy that adds a good deal of support when the Calibarn is holding its weapon. Once attached, it will not bump into other parts and it's easy enough to slide the arm for the Calibarn to hold the rifle. Looking at it from the side profile, you can really see the resemblance to a witch riding its broomstick, only in this case, the Calibarn is holding its rod rifle to the side. Still looks pretty cool in my opinion. Props to the design department for coming up with such a unique and wonderful weapon for an amazing design such as the Gundam Calibarn. I really like the look of it when it's holding its main weapon. Another special equipment of the Calibarn is the Escutcheon. Inherited from the Gundam Aerial Rebuild and shown here molded in white to complement the Calibarn's color scheme. It can combine into a defensive shield or separate into 11 individual remote beam turrets known as bit staves. When the escutcheon is on its shield form, it's held together by a single frame piece. The individual bit staves have varying degrees of detail which benefit greatly when you apply panel lines and paint to them. The shield can be attached to either arm by plugging it into the slots at the side of the arm. Sadly, with the way the connection is, we don't get to move the shield in a different position. By attaching the 11 different bit staves across various hard points on the body of the Gundam, you get the Calibarn's bit on form. The technology behind this is to quickly replenish propellant and electrical energy to the bit staves and it has an added bonus of providing the Gundam Calibarn with increased mobility as the thrusters of the bit staves helps boost the whole mobile suit. From the moment I saw the bit on form on the Lifrith and the Aerial, I've been a huge fan of the whole concept, and seeing it being inherited by the Calibarn is just the cherry on top for me. I love how the awesome proportions and silhouette of the Gundam is further enhanced by the addition of the bit staves, making the Calibarn a tad bit bulkier in places and it just works so well. The way the backpack and rear skirts have expanded adds to the whole high mobility look, while the bit staves at the arms look like mini shields with beam guns on them. Combined with a variable rod rifle, the Gundam Calibarn is packing some serious firepower. For size comparison, here's the Gundam Calibarn alongside the HGUC RX782 Gundam The Origin Version and the HGCE Destiny Gundam. All three Gundams are on the standard 18 meter height range. This will give you some insight if ever the leads of the Universal Century, Adstella, and Cosmic Era timelines come together in one picture. And here's the Calibarn alongside one of the more larger mobile suits, namely the real grade Zazabi. Standing at 25.6 meters, the Zazabi towers above the Calibarn in terms of head height and bulk. The HG Gundam Calibarn reinforces the saying, going out with a bang. Being the apparent last release of the Witch from Mercury line and Gundam protagonist Suleta Mercury's final mobile suit, Bandai really knocked it out of the park with this one. From its stunning design and intricate details to its impressive articulation and possibility, this HG gives you all that you want in a great kit and more. Some of the very minor issues include some mold lines and seam lines across the body and the rod rifle but you won't be able to notice them by the end product even as a straight build unless you're really looking for it. The aesthetics are spot on and it doesn't come off as a derivative of the Gundam Aerial Rebuild although it does share some of its build aspects. And the Gundam Calibarn stands out as its own unique design. The accessories is another one of this kit's strong points as the variable rod rifle not only looks good but feels solid and doesn't come off as cumbersome. And the inclusion of an escutcheon molded in white completes the amazing loadout of this fantastic Gundam. The inclusion of a pair of open hands for dynamic poses would have been great but I guess Bandai just wants to maximize the sale of its Mersal flight unit. I hope you've enjoyed this review and feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more Gunplay reviews and unboxings. I'll see you on the next one.